Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu, wa salamu ala rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome back Welcome back to another production, another video from Radu Shubuhat In this video, we want to deal with some current news that have reached us And that is about the death of Nabil Qureshi In this video, we want to deal with the responses that has occurred After the news of the death of Nabil Qureshi both from the sides of the Muslims and the sides of the Christians and also the final point we want to look at in this video is analyzing some of the doctrinal beliefs that Nabil espoused as a Christian and how does those beliefs relate to the situation that he found himself in this is not about the individual himself Rather, this is about the doctrine that he promoted and also before we get to that, we want to just clarify some of the responses that have taken place from the Muslims as well as the Christians. So these three points we want to highlight and look at and we hope that this, this video has some benefit that reaches the masses and they can take the benefit from it as they see fit. The first point is the response of many Muslims online that we read and hear when the news of Nabil Qureshi's death reached the, 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 uh, the social media uh, family. Whether it be Facebook, whether it be Twitter or whatever other social media outlet uh, that people use. Um, but I read several comments uh, from Muslims in particular that I find myself to be uh, unacceptable and I want to highlight and express uh, the position of Islam as it relates to this. The Muslims are not trying to and Islam is not trying to politicize the death of anyone and we're not trying to use this to bolster the proof of Islam about this individual. We have no ability to know with any absolute certainty the reasons that God Almighty choose to do certain things the way He chooses to do certain things. So as a Muslim, we cannot say with any absolute authority that this demise and death of Nabil Qureshi was somehow a punishment from God, that God inflicted upon Nabil for one reason or another. This is completely God's jurisdiction and we cannot with any absolute certainty say that this is the case. We don't know, and any Muslim who asserts such only asserts it from his own opinion and not with facts from God Almighty because God has not revealed to anyone in this day and time that this is the reason why this individual was afflicted with the illness that he was afflicted with. So I want to clarify that first and foremost. Second of all, I want to clarify as it relates to the Muslims and their responses is that many Muslims have out of their own frustration and their own uh, response of constantly being attacked by people who are anti-Islamic have lashed out and made proclamations of curses against Nabil Qureshi and this also is not consistent with the teachings of Islam. We don't find from the teachings of Islam and the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he made these type of individual specific declarations against any individual, especially those who have deceased. Now Bill Qureshi has passed on and his fate now lies with God Almighty. And nothing can change that fate for it is sealed. He has passed on to this, from this world. Whatever God has in store for Nabil, then God has in store for Nabil and that's between him and God Almighty. As Muslims, we believe that Nabil Qureshi did in fact die in a state that was not acceptable to God and this is our belief. But nonetheless, his fate now is with God and God will decide his fate however God has destined his fate to be decided. We have no 
authority and no example from our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would go and curse individuals specifically by name and especially publicly. And my advice to the Muslims is to refrain from this, to stop it. It's not from Islam, it's not from the ways of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it does no benefit to the, situa to, to the situation and it does no benefit to the, uh, the promotion and the teaching of Islam. Rather, it's antithetical to Islam and no one will want to hear anything from Muslims if all we have to bring to people is things of vile nature. So I don't accept it, I don't promote it, and I don't find it to be from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, I find the opposite to be the case. Continuing, we know from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that there was an occasion where he was sitting with some of his companions and a funeral procession passed him. And he stood up to honor it. And his companion said to him, O Messenger of God, this funeral procession is that of a Jew who are antithetical and antagonistic to Islam. So why would you stand and honor it? He said, Is it not a human soul? Is it not a human soul? So the, the, the soul of Nabi Qureshi has left this world and it entered into another realm. And now his fate is with God. We should not demean or revile the dead and not curse them and be, um, behave in this type of activity and God knows best and this is what I wanted to uh, encourage and advise the Muslim community with. As it relates to the Christian community, I want to also advise you with something because this is often taken as um, something to enhance the political movement against Islam. I hear so many times Nabil Qureshi now introduced as the ex-Muslim. The ex-Muslim, the ex-Muslim. What's the need for you to introduce Nabil Qureshi as the ex-Muslim? What does his history of Islam have to do with his demise and his death? Why must you introduce him as the ex-Muslim? And this is the question that I would like the Christians to answer, even though I believe the answer is because Nabil Qureshi has become the poster icon for leaving Islam and embracing Christianity. So now it's a theological war that yes, we stole one from you and take this. He's an ex-Muslim. He's an ex-Muslim. But what does what of his what does his ex uh, Islam or his being ex-Muslim have to do with now his demise and his death? Why must you politicize this to use this to bolster Nabil's position uh, as a Christian and demean uh, demean the uh, status of a Muslim? I don't think this is appropriate either for Christians, and I think that you should leave this type of activity. Again, the idea of Nabil Qureshi being plagued with the situation as a punishment from God is something also that we need to highlight on this point because unfortunately Nabil Qureshi hinted to or promoted the idea that another uh, famous Muslim scholar, uh, our Sheikh Ahmadidat Rahimahullah, in his passing, this was also politicized because he was on his deathbed for some time. And many Christians use this to say that this was God's way of punishing and silencing Ahmed Didat because of his work against Christianity. Unfortunately, Nabil fell prone to this. But again, my advice to Muslims is don't we fall into this trap and try to use this to say that this is God's way of punishing Nabil for one reason or another. Let's not fall into the same trap that others have fallen into and expose um, their spiritual uh, uh, depravity. This is not our way and we should stay away from it. And in closing, quickly, we want to ask the question, and this becomes a bit personal in terms of the doctrine and theology, but I want us to separate this from being a personal attack against Nabil because it's not. But Nabil in his vlogs, and I think this vlog has done something that has never been done before, that it has actually uh, systematically monitored the condition and the demise of Nabil Qureshi in his, in his health up until his passing. Um, and in so doing, we've seen step for step his condition and that it did not improve. 
All the while, Nabil continually prayed for a healing from God. And this is the point that we want to get to, is that in or part of Christian uh, doctrine or belief is that um, miracles are performed in the name of Jesus. Healing is performed in the name of Jesus. And Christians are vehemently um, um, emphatic about healing in the name of Jesus. I was on a show, ABN, some time ago, and one of the pastors on there uh, was mentioning about how the name of Jesus can heal and, and the power of it to heal and how it healed a tumor that a person had in their brain. He even said that, like, his someone laid hands on the individual and the tumor that was in his brain actually fell out of his ear. I mean, this is an actual statement from a pastor on live television, on live broadcast. So this is something that Christians, uh, you find oftentimes is pushed amongst the Christian circle of how the name of Jesus has the power of healing. And this is something that we find in almost all of the vlogs of Nabil Qureshi that he insisted that he was waiting for healing for this uh, illness that plagued him. The question I want to ask to the Christian audience is that if this is something is that, that is believed in Christianity, that God heals in the name of Jesus, then how does such suffering uh, continue in spite of constant prayer and constant plea for the healing, yet it did not come? Now, we know God has his decisions to make as he sees fit, but if this is something that you promote, then is this now something to be considered uh, that you can retract or that you don't promote as vehemently because we've seen from video to video to video up until his demise that in fact God did not heal, although healing was prayed, it was done in the name of Jesus and these things, but they never occurred or took place as was anticipated or hoped for by Nabil Qureshi. So it's something for us to consider. It's something for us to uh, keep in mind when we promote this type of facet uh, or this type of understanding of Christianity. Has this situation shown to backfire and shown that in fact that the validity of healing in the name of Jesus is not something that's 100% guaranteed and if that's the case, how, to, how, how do we rectify that with the doctrine or this promotion that Christians offer to Muslims? Um, this is just some thoughts. Again, let's separate this from the individual himself, but we're just analyzing some aspects that came to us by way of Nabil Qureshi. Uh, so we, you know, we want to take the opportunity to first and foremost rectify some of the responses as well as make this uh, analysis and hope that it's something for us to think about and open a discussion that uh, in the future can we look at faith healing as a, a, a practical solution to problems that Christians face. Again, if so, then why, why is not this used uh, more widespread and in more cases when people are suffering, why not just heal in the name of Jesus? Um, so you know, this is from a Muslim perspective, very difficult to wrestle with and accept when we see something like this uh, to be the case because we have seen firsthand how in spite of the name of Jesus and in spite of the belief in Jesus, still individual was not healed. So how do we now, uh, to be expected to have any belief in such a, um, a, a doctrine or a belief promoted by the Christians. Uh, this is a very sensitive um, topic and I'm trying my best um, to be sensitive and not offend anyone, but at the same time, highlight aspects of the truth and not compromise in those regards. This is what we wanted to bring. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ali wa sallam wa sallam subhanaka lahum wa bihamdika ashadu ala ila ala ant asakhfuruka wa atubu alaik wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.